good afternoon. So, having seen that, so now we have to take care of these and design a controller appropriately. Now, let us look at performance. So, what is the first, first requirement of performance? The first requirement of performance is that performance can be divided into two types in control. One is called steady state performance, another is called transient performance. In general, steady state performance is much more important than transient performance simply because of the fact that that performance holds over a much longer interval. Generally in industrial automation, the set point changes somewhat infrequently. For example, if you take a power station boiler, then its set point over a day will typically be changed 7, 8, 9 times, maybe, maybe less. So, when you will have load coming in the morning, its set point will be changed. When lighting load in the evening will start going down after let us say 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock load will fall at that time you have to reduce the set point. So, there are infrequent set point changes and in between this, these set points are generally maintained. This happens for a lot of process equipment. So, if you have performance degradations which are persisting during that phase when the, when the set point is held, then, then that is generally considered much more uh, serious than uh, errors that can occur when the set point is changing or immediately after that time for a, for, a, for a short duration. So, we would first like to ensure steady state performance and the major consideration for that is steady state error. That is we want that R should be equal to Y at least in the steady state. Obviously, if R suddenly changes, Y cannot suddenly change. So, Y will have to, Y will take some time to come to the level of R. But once it comes, we want that this error will will be 0. We want 0 steady state error. This is our wish. So, so, so how to obtain that? Right? So, uh, so, for that, so we want that this is the steady state error that is limit of t tending. Typically, we take a unit step response. So, if the uh, resp reference input suddenly changes, then how is as time passes, does the error go to 0? that is limit of t tending to infinity e t. We can also express it in a uh, frequency domain form which says that which uses the final value theorem of Laplace transforms and which comes down to the fact that e, e steady state is limit of s tending to 0 1 by g s k s. Right? So, uh, so, this is the steady state error and we have to ensure one of the prime requirements is to ensure by control that this goes to 0. So, how do we do that? So, we have to control for 0 state steady state. Let us let's take the simplest case of proportional control. The problem of proportional control is that if you want to proportional control is just you have a simple gain and if you get an error of 1 volt, you generate a maybe an output of 100 volts. If you get an error of 2 volts, you generate an output of 200 volts. So, just simple multiplication. Now, obviously, we want to we, what do we want? We want that this r be equal to y. So, we want to r is a certain value. So, we want to maintain a certain value of y. Now, naturally in it happens so happens that for maintaining a particular value of y, we need a particular value of u. So, for the time being assume that 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 this is not there. So, now how are we going to get this u? If we, if we want to maintain this u, then we have to maintain a particular value of e. So, unless we have a certain amount of steady state error, we cannot generate u and th therefore, which cannot generate y. So, so, we cannot make steady state error at 0 ever using proportional control that is what it turns out to be. So, what happens is that the there are two things that could happen either you could artificially increase this r that is if you want let us say an r of really want that the that the output stays at 1 volt you give an r of maybe 1.1 volt just in what volt you have to give that you have to calculate but so so you artificially increase 1.1 volt so that here you get 1 volt which is the real output you want right or what you could do is apart from what the controller is doing you can give a you can give what is known as this manual bias that is you you apply some additional input right directly to the plant. So, you do one of these two things. 
in that case you can maintain whatever output you want but what is the problem the main problem is that who is going to give this input how do we know by how much for example if we give 1.1 volt for uh, 1 volt how do we know let us say if we want an output of 3 volts what output we have to give by how much so naturally it, it, it should not require a manual you know manipulation it should be done automatically right so that brings us to to the question that how can we automatically generate this bias input without any manual intervention so the question is that how do we how to create bias input for zero error right so that's the situation described here what what should be this so we see the, we we see that what is the device which for zero error gives an gives an output so that device is actually an integrator so somewhere in the loop there should be an integrator then even if the error is 0 we will be able to give a finite output so there are actually two cases in which an integrator is required so the first case is this one so if you have an integrator here imagine that we have written k i by s in Laplace domain notation which means that this is actually in an integrator that is u is equal to integral k i e t d t. So, this is the, the integrator. So, this is equal to u t. So, now you see that even if uh, if after some time this at this point if we, even if we get e e goes to 0. So, for example, suppose the error goes to 0 this is this is uh, this is y this level is r this is the level so here error is going to 0 but what will be the value of the integral what will be the output of this block the output of this block is going to be the the area under the curve because this is the error this is y and this is r so r minus y is this vertical distance so this is the area right so this area even if the error remains 0 this area remains finite so you can generate a finite u even when the error is 0 you can keep generating it so so having an integrator helps there is another case in which you can have an you can have an integrator that is the integrator is actually part of the plant itself which means that to be able to sustain an output the plant may not need an input all the time so the plant itself is an integrator what is the typical example of this a typical example of this is a tank so suppose you have a cistern you know like we have in our toilets so you can have a flow in and th this flow in is actually this flow is actually proportional to the level actually there is a if you might have noticed if you have looked into the cistern that there is a there, there is a ball cock floating ball so when the when there is no water then the ball cock is hanging like this and water flowing so as water rises so the ball cock goes up 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 and at a certain level the the valve through which the water is flowing will actually close so at that level it will be maintained so you see now so this tank is a plant which this this tank is a plant which is which has an integrator with respect to flow because the level is 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 nothing but an integral of flow so at some point to be able to maintain a level this is a level it does not need any flow so the flow can go to zero so still so we, we are having a simple proportional controller so the error going to zero flow goes to zero but still level is maintained so this is a, this is another situation where you can have zero steady state error now uh, now so so exactly this is what happens so now now you see if you if you put the integrator what happens is, is very interesting so what happens is that this bias input which was previously coming now comes automatically that is the 
the integral output which I was talking about now increases, increases, increases till it can then it goes to 0 and then if you if you change the set point again from here to here again some error will be created and it will again integrate, integrate, integrate and will generate just enough output such that it can be it can be sustained without the error. So, you see that the integrator is actually the integrator actually works as as the integrator actually works as a very interesting thing it it actually gives a bias input, but which is not manual. So, the bias input the integrator is actually exactly like the like the like the bias input, but it generates it automatically you, you do not have to give it annual uh, you do not have to give it manually and it will adjust itself depending on if you depending on the set point. So, the so the integrator will automatically build up and give enough additional input such that at 0 error it can be sustained. So, that is the that is the that is the principle by which 0 steady state error is obtained. Now, uh, only thing is that now this has certain there are there are certain drawbacks too. For example, let us see that if you if you give a step response if you give a step response then how does it how does it work how does the loop work. So, you see that suppose the process starts from here. So, the process starts from here and starts. So, as you, you have given, so, so here there is a lot of error. So, the proportional controller now generates a positive input which drives the plant. So, the plant goes up and typical we, we, we are likely to get a step response like this. So, what happens during this phase? During this phase, during this phase, you have proportional is positive. Error, error is positive, so output is positive, but since the error is decreasing, so the output is going down. So, it is positive, but going down that is the output of the proportional controller. What does the integral controller do? The integral controller is, is also positive, because it is integrating positive error and it is increasing, because the because the area as it is going with time, this, this area is continuously increasing. So, it is positive and going up increasing right. So, what happens at this point at this point at this point error is 0. So, the proportional controller output is 0, but because the integral controller output is still positive. So, the plant continues on this journey in this path right. Now, at when it is here let us say when it is here the proportional controller around this point p is neg uh, p is negative but i is still positive because of the fact that there is already a large positive integral accumulated here so here integral is negative this part of the integral is negative but still there is a large positive integral. So, it so the overall net output is maybe still positive. So, it continues on this journey, but eventually the this integral value also reduces and the proportional controller value also becomes enough negative. So, the overall input turns negative and the plant turns to move. Now, again the same thing happens here once it crosses this line now, now that now now again it will it will oscillate. So, you see that typically because of integral control there tends to be an oscillation. So, there tends to be a high overshoot and an oscillation. So, this is a drawback of integral control that is to gain steady state error to gain uh, to gain 0 steady state error this is the price that you are paying that in your transient response you are likely to get some. Uh, <coughs> overshoot. So, uh, so that is the picture for the step response. So, we want to improve transient response without sacrificing the steady state error. So, if you want to do that then what we have to do is that around this point only here we have to we have to we have to we have to keep breaking you know we have to keep breaking and around this point so that we can quickly turn. 
So, what happens is that here now we have to we have, we have to slow down. So, slowing down means during this phase we have to create more negative input which will grow towards this point as it comes closer it should this, this negative input should increase. Similarly, around this point this this negative input should also this negative input should also in keep keep increasing so that it quickly turns and, and then actually it will settle very fast. So, you see it will not oscillate if you we want that it does not oscillate so many times, but rather follows this yellow curve maybe does a small overshoot and then immediately settles down this is the kind of curve that we want. So, now it turns out that this kind of curve we can obtain if we add a a a derivative term to error right. So, we want to reduce rise time what is rise time we want to reduce rise rise time is we want to reduce this time we want to typically speaking we want to reduce overshoot that is this height and we want to also reduce settling time that is total time by taken for it to come to a steady state. So, we want to reduce that all these now getting all this is somewhat difficult and and, and that is why you need to have a uh, you need to have a non trivial tuning exercise to you know come to a compromise between these because but typically what we do is it turns out that 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 these things can be achieved we have already discussed proportional and integral controller and we have also seen that that adding a derivative will you know try to break break so that so that it does not go towards much overshoot. So, we need a we need a proportional controller because if you do not have a proportional controller then then there will tend to be too much too much of oscillation we need an integral controller to have 0 steady state error and we need to have a derivative controller to have low overshoot and fast settling time and we need to tune this gains k p k i and k d nicely. So, that we uh, we get a good transient response without sacrificing on the 0 steady state error. One thing interesting to see is that this so we now calculate input like this. Now, interestingly that you see that in the steady state in the steady state the total e is 0. So, therefore, this term is 0. So, the proportional controller is 0 and since e is not also changing. So, there is a d d t is also 0. So, that is also gone. So, we only have the whole output coming from the integral part. So, so the 0 steady state error concept that we have studied for the integral control holds. Now, uh, so as, as, as I said that we need uh, we are we are looking for a step response like this, this would be a very good step response and 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 we if we can make it even sharper even better but generally if we want to make it sharper then if we can make it like this even better so this is a good step response that we would like to achieve so now come to the point of disturbance rejection so it, what is the disturbance response the disturbance. So, let us talk about there are there are there are several types of disturbances and you, you can do the same kind of analysis, but the most predominant disturbance which occurs generally is the load disturbance in a process occur due to various reasons property variations of materials uh, variations in you know power sources voltages variations in pressure sources all sorts of things. So, uh, it turns out that the transfer function we want to reduce the effect of the we want to reduce the effect of d 0 on y. So, what is the transfer function between y and d 0 that that turns out to be this. So, now again we see that if we have so you know it is not possible to to exactly neutralize all kinds of disturbances, but let us say one of the ma major kinds of disturbances step disturbance again that is disturbances which change once or twice and then stay on. Okay. So, if you have step disturbances then then you can again see that uh, that if you have an 
if you have an integral then this term will actually go very high as 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 s tends to 0. So, the effect of so, but for the same reason exactly similar transfer function is coming. So, it is the same reason why E goes to 0 with integral control if you put integral control even the effect of step disturbances will also go away because the integral value will rise and it will provide the additional torque to actually take care of the disturbance. So, it will produce and it the integral will rise and it will here it will instead of producing y it will automatically produce an output y plus d 0 or rather y minus d 0. So, that after plus d 0 you will get the desired value of y. So, this is going to happen. So, so integral control is one of the major ways of reducing disturbance response. So, this is this is now let us look at some some some, some other issues for example, this we have to we have to actually remember these things because these are, they are very practical issues and we possibly did not learn about these in our uh, in our earlier control scores where we treated things rather ideally, but we must remember here that some other non idealnesses exist. For example, there can be very often there can be actuated saturation that is the characteristic of the this is the control input C i and this is the plant input P i. So, this is the actuator characteristic. So, as you increase the control input the actuator will also proportionally include the plant input, but only up to a certain point after which it will saturate. So, if you give more and more control input it will not give you proportionally high plant input. So, the actuator typically will saturate. Now, when the actuator saturates effectively the feedback loop is opened because the effect of the error no longer transmits to the output or rather the plant input. So, the input does not change in, in, in response to the error, but is held constant that is the case of an open loop operation. So, your control is gone and not only that the sometimes as we shall see later that the that, the, that persistently actuator saturation persistent actuator saturation has very bad effects on 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 controllers especially with because of the fact that controllers have memory. So, this is a particular phenomenon which occurs in uh, PID controllers and, and we are going to take a look at it uh, in, in great detail in the next lecture. So, uh, next issue that we should look at is sensor bias. So, you know remember that if you have a sensor bias sensor has errors then sensors are the eyes of the controller. So, whatever the sensor sees that the controller simply works on that. So, if you have bias you will think that is the controller will produce an input which will have 0 error, but actually there will be non 0 error. So, that is so, so you have 0 error, but you have non 0 error. Similarly, uh, we we have to remember that that you always have actually you design controllers based on some models but it always turns out that these models are actually inaccurate so 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 you are always going to have model errors and these model errors are typically dominant in the in the high frequency band and now remember that if you have inaccuracy in the in the high frequency band it is it is the errors in the high actually typically instability occurs in the high frequency band not in the dc band low frequency band. So, if you have modeling error in the high frequency band then such modeling inaccuracies can also lead, lead to stability problems. So, we have to remember these things. So, to, 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 to take care of these things various kinds of other architectures are possible than what we have that is the loop structure what feedback we will use how we will use the controllers and, and we will see some of them for example, feed forward uh, configuration cascade configuration we will see all of them. Uh, so, they are possible. Finally, while we are moving towards the conclusion let me mention some of my pet uh, facts about control in colloquial terms. So, I say that what you feedback is what you control, what you so, so the controller exactly tries to maintain the feedback. So, if your feedback is erroneous then your, then your control is erroneous. If you are sitting in the 
middle of the room and if you are put your temperature sensor at the at the roof of the room then you are controlling the temperature at the roof of the room not in the middle of the room right then when you what you cannot actuate you cannot control so you may be giving whatever in uh, output from the controller you may be using a fancy algorithm but if you cannot actuate it then you are not controlling it if you can if you can measure or estimate the disturbances then you can compensate them so one of i mean there there, there are many advanced algorithms which have, which precisely try to do that stability is basically a, stability is not enough stability is 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 barely basic performance you must ensure stability and then ensure performance but but while you ensure performance if you as you try to go, go more and more drive more and more and improve performance eventually instability results so so instability is actually comes it actually decides the generally decides the maximum performance that you can achieve and models are always approximate most systems are actually non linear but that does not mean that we can work with approximate so linear control can work very well for non linear plants but sometimes non linear control may be working better but 95% of industrial controllers are linear so we have come to the end of the lesson and let's review quickly so we looked at the objectives of automatic control maintain stability follow set point disturb reject disturbance we, lo we looked at stability and found the causes of stability in uh, causes of instability in a process loop we looked at steady state error and the ways of reducing it and we also looked at the ways of reducing transient performance keeping the steady state error at zero so we saw that the pid control is a very effective way of and simple and effective way of doing that and eventually we say we saw that pid control can also do some amount of very common disturbance rejections so that's the end of the lesson let's here are some points for you to ponder first is that state the three major objectives of automatic control which i have just now said state three major causes of instability in a control loop and give this is tricky try it give an example for each case practical example and is it possible for a proportional controller to achieve zero steady state error i have already explained an example you try to explain it in your own language and explain how a pid controller can achieve good transient performance as well as zero steady state response and finally uh, justify or contradict the statement that pid control achieves zero steady state error with step set points and disturbances thank you very much we'll see in the next lecture